Welcome to the Neckbeard Experience. I've got several stories for you that I'd like to share. Hope you guys enjoy. Without further ado, let's go. This involves two people to be precise. Their names, for the sake of privacy, was Tanya and Lord Orange. I knew Tanya from our youth center. I went there from time to time and she was a volunteer. Lord Orange was dating her, and would bless us mortals with his presence now and then, visiting her at the center. Tanya was a woman in her early 20s, with long greasy black hair, pale skin, wore dark gothic looking clothes, also smelled like sweaty armpits all the time. I can't remember a time when Tanya didn't reek of perspiration, even during the months when it was freezing outside. Now, let's move on to Lord Orange. I call him that because every time he's around, he wears a ridiculous black hat that has an orange feather at the top. He frequently talked about himself and the things he liked. And you guessed it, orange was his favorite color. He never got tired of reminding us. He was short and chubby, a 20-something black man with a stereotypical neckbeard facial hair. He would wear a long maroon leather jacket with the sleeves cut off and spewed random Japanese phrases at times, while posing like a samurai. And like Tanya, he always smelled like armpits. Now back then, I was a shy one, like most people at one time. Now Tanya sat at a desk at the entrance of the youth center. She was there to greet people, but it was usually never crowded, so she spent most of her time talking on her cell phone. One day in summer, when coming in, I tried starting a conversation with her. At first, it seemed to go off pretty well. However, somehow we got on the subject of fighting opponents. And Tanya said something that should have sent me running, if I had any common sense back then. If I were ever trying to beat you in a fight, I'd take a sword and go for your legs. I was shocked, and I was in disbelief of this statement. Unsure how to respond, I made a nervous laugh, and she replied, it's good to talk to somebody who wouldn't be freaked out by that kind of subject. You have to come out with me and my future husband, Lord Orange. So not long afterwards, I was invited to join their stinky duo, going over to their house to celebrate Lord Orange's birthday. Since I didn't have a car, and they lived about 30 minutes away, they had to come and pick me up from my house. I didn't tell my family who I was going out with. Please remember, during this time of my life, I was very lonely, and I didn't have a lot of friends. So my judgment was bad enough to let me think that it was a good idea to hang out with a woman who talked about gleefully cutting off my legs with a sword. Maybe she just had a weird sense of humor? A really weird one. Now when they came to get me, Tanya pulled up in an old white jeep with a plastic skull sitting in her front window. Lord Orange was in the passenger seat, looking at me with a smug smile, showing yellow teeth and wearing his trademark round hat with a yellow feather sticking out, which was smashed up against the jeep's ceiling. He held a wooden katana in his lap. I got in the back, and the floor was littered with bags of McDonald's and other fast food places. The seats were covered in various items of old CDs, broken plastic necklaces, anime magazines, and more. Before we go to the house, we must stop to get some mead, explained Lord Orange in his dramatic voice. I'm guessing mead meant cheap beer, since we ended up buying it from a local grocery store, and believe me, it was cheap. After making their purchase, Tanya looked behind us at an old woman buying milk. The woman asked for it to be put in a plastic bag. Now I know that most people putting milk in plastic bags is kind of pointless, but this was really uncalled for. Tanya made a shrill cackle and said out loud to everyone who could hear right in front of the old woman. Oh my god, what kind of moron puts milk in a plastic bag? You have to have no common sense to do something so stupid. The old woman heard this and she looked down at the floor and walked away. She had an embarrassed look on her face. When we left the building, I told Tanya, You don't have to go and say something like that. What'd she ever do to you? Tanya grinned, and she responded in a melodramatic voice. 
When I see something stupid, I call it out for what it is. My mom taught me to speak up for what I feel and stand up for what I believe in. So you like to pick fights just for the sake of it? Tanya's smug face was replaced by an irritated one. Lord Orange was just laughing his head off. How would you like it if you were left stranded there, John? She said in a spiteful tone, I was far from my home at the time, and I didn't have a cell phone with me, so that I can call for a ride back. So, not wanting to be left alone, in an unfamiliar place at night, I dropped the subject. When we got to their house, my nose was met with the same sweaty stench of armpit. The floor was a nasty maroon, and it was covered in pieces of plastic, cigarette butts, ancient looking dog toys, and empty beer cans. I spent at least four hours there with them. Most of the time I spent listening to them talk about their lives in a small hometown, particularly their high school days. To this day, people in that inbred town talk about me. I've become a legend in my own life. Boasted Tanya, Lord Orange kept blurting out random Japanese phrases, like he was in some kind of anime, and he bragged about his skills while waving his wooden katana and pretending to shave like a samurai. I am a god, and every foolish mortal will know it one day. He said it in a voice meant to sound epic. Eventually, I decided I wasn't this desperate for friends, and I asked Tanya if I can borrow her phone for a minute. She obliged. And I called my dad, telling him where I was, and asked him for a ride back home. By this point, they had drunk a lot of beer, and they had no plans of driving anytime soon. Eventually, dad did come and pick me up, and he asked me what I was doing there. And I responded with, Something very stupid. Afterwards, I cut ties from both Tanya and Lord Orange, and I stopped going to the youth center altogether. So I live in a small city in SoCal. Just for some context, I'm a 14 year old male and I'm half Vietnamese and half Mexican. I recently joined a gym with my dad and older brother. I was ecstatic when I found that they had a heavy bag there. I'm really into boxing and MMA. So I thought this would be a perfect place for me to practice and to do my drills outside the MMA gym. Fast forward to three weeks later. I saw three guys wandering around the heavy bag, and they were talking to each other. I was the only one who really used the heavy bag in the short time that I've been there, so it was cool to see other people there using the heavy bag. None of these guys looked like they knew what they were doing. They had no gloves, no wraps, which is essential if you don't want to smash your wrist. Also the main guy, Boxer Beard, he looked like he was trying to coach the others. He was throwing his punches in an awkward way, sort of chicken winging his arms and flinching out punches. I didn't worry about it too much. I thought maybe they were just having a good time and messing around. Well, that all changed when I approached the bag after they left. About two minutes later, I put on my gloves. All three approached me with their leader boxer beard himself, and he was leading the way, and sort of did a bow with his hands clasped together to greet me. This ignited some red flags immediately, since I knew very well at this point what a neckbeard was. But I thought he was doing it joking based on the memes. So I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Just then, he gave me some kind of weird greeting. What I'm assuming was Japanese, which it didn't make any sense, because I don't even look Japanese. I don't know what you're saying, man. I said, as the cringe washed over me. Sorry. I said, are you in the game too? He asked. I wish I was kidding. He was a heavy set guy, probably in his mid-twenties, and he smelled strongly of sweat and shame. Keep in mind, he was standing about five or six feet away at this point, and he was wearing what looked like stretched out, faded, everlast jersey that was drenched in sweat. The two guys next to him were Asian, roughly around the same height, and one of them had a pair of glasses on. They were both slightly shorter than Boxer Beard. What? Game. Boxing! What game do you think, kid? He sort of yelled it so that everyone around could hear him. Yeah? I replied. Are your gloves a small or a medium? He said enthusiastically. What? This threw me off because boxing gloves aren't really measured in size. They're usually categorized by weight, so there really isn't a small, medium, or large glove, technically. They're 12 ounces. I said. Cool, cool. I, I could teach you a thing or two. 
I've been doing this for a while now, he said. I sort of knew that this guy was full of crap, but I didn't think that his friends knew better. Thanks, but I'm good, man. I said. You sure? Your form's pretty off. I could give you some tips. I could say the same for you. I replied. His friends looked at him a little confused when I said this. Boxerbeard looked at me with a tinge of resentment. You guys don't seriously think he's legit, right? He looks like he could break his hand on the bag. I said to the other two. My god, he looked like he was gonna burst. He just stared at me and said, I'm just trying to help. No need to be rude. Followed by, Whatever, kid. I bet you I can knock you out with one solid hook. I performed my moves for years, and I'm an expert standing up or on the ground. By the way, I'm only 14, and he was a grown man. So yeah, he technically threatened to assault me, a child. He sort of puffed out his chest and raised his shoulders when he said it, and I gave him a sort of... Really, dude? Look, and just went back to doing my drills. Not to shame anyone if they're overweight, but this dude had a body of a slug, like Jabba the Hutt. He made Jabba the Hutt look like a fitness freak. It was physically impossible for him to be an expert, neither grappling or striking. Maybe if he wanted to squish you to death, he made some weird angry groan after glaring at me more for about two minutes. Then he strode off toward the locker room. He was in there about ten minutes, and he briskly walked out of the front doors with his two friends. I've never seen some weirdo like this in the gym again. I really like it there. And people with that attitude ruin the experience for everyone. Long story short, if you want to be seen by everyone as a boxer, go sign up for a boxing gym. Put the work in. Earn the title. Don't brag to your friends that you're something you're not. Oh yeah, also something else to bring up. He also said, I'm a master at old Koya Kenshin Karate, and I've learned from the experts in Japan. I've competed in several underground commodities. A sort of freestyle fighting tournament. I've also learned boxing too, kid. And this part is probably what qualifies this guy as a full-on neckbeard. Okay, folks, stay clear of the neckbeardian kind and all others like them. Thank you again for joining me for this edition of the Neckbeard Experience. I've got another one following shortly after, so stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for being so patient with me. It's been a while since I've been on, but I hope to get right back to it. So thank you very much, and I'll see you again. And just remember, have fun with your failures, or they'll have fun with you.